subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiran Dadia. We have with us Kunal Shah, Head of Commodities Research, joining in. Kunal, welcome to the show. My first question coming to you is with regards to where the dollar index is concerned. Clearly, it is struggling for direction around that 92.7 mark. Uh, however, it seems we could probably see an upside going up to 93 levels. Uh, you have the Democratic win. You have Pfizer's vaccine. Both of these have actually kept the dollar under pressure. From here on, what's the kind of direction are we expected to see any and any levels that you have been tracking? Okay, so I've shared the screen uh, with everyone. Can you see this? Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. So if you look at this instrument, that is a US uh, ten-year bond yield. Okay. So before uh, the news of vaccine, this was trading at. Uh, 90 uh, 0.79 okay now if you look what happened uh, from that day from 0.79 it has surged back to 0.96 so uh -huh. what does this mean for uh, gold and silver first uh, let, and then uh, the overall view of uh, dollar considering this uh -huh. when your 10 year bond yield starts moving up and your interest rates are lower it means right. that market is expecting the rates to gradually move up, but not not on an immediate basis. But the bond market is pricing is moving ahead. Why it is moving ahead? The bond market, the bond yields are shooting up because the growth projections of the United States have improved recently. So mm. after this news of vaccine, so when the growth projection improves, the the downside in the dollar is going to get restricted. So I think in near term, dollar index is not going to go below 92. 92 is going to be the bottom for the dollar index in the near term. Okay. Uh -huh. And the more dollar index gets stronger and stronger, the higher pressure you will see on gold and silver. So uh, on Monday, when we did the webinar, we were not aware that the vaccine news will be coming out. The moment uh, there was a, a, a vaccine news, then 90% efficacy is announced by Pfizer, I immediately posted on all the groups mm. indicating that uh, prices sentimentally is going to go down. I was not expecting honestly 10% downside in silver, uh, but uh, this is the market where everyone is long. Everyone was long in gold and silver and the moment news came and it went down, so one after another level got breached and then gold and silver both started to go down. Mm. Now from here, what is going to be the trend? The trend is not going to be very bullish. $1,900, not very bullish. $1,900 for the time being is not going to be taken off. And on COMEX, silver $25, not going to be taken off easily. Huh. So these two will remain the hurdle on the upside. And the moment we see any major meaningful upside coming, people will come and exit. Because why people were buying gold and silver, considering uh, there was a coronavirus crisis going on, uh, we never knew when the vaccine are going to be out. So more and more people are going to be uh, ex going to exit from gold uh, the moment it moves up. But I'm not very bearish. So this is just a phase where gold is going to take a breather. Uh -huh. I'm not very bearish because the central bankers are still going to print more and more money going forward. And that is going to either cause inflation or more and more volatility and uncertainty. So uh -huh. I'm not going to aggressively go uh, to recommend go long right now. But if gold corrects, uh, say for example, 48,500, 49,000, so those were those will be the level where I will not look at what is happening in the dollar index or with the markets. I will start taking position. So uh, maximum on the downside, 40, 50 dollars of fall in gold. I will still not rule out another four to five percent fall. I will not rule out. If it happens, I will not be surprised. I'm not saying that it will happen immediately. Mm. But gradually, it can because now okay. investor knows that the Pfizer vaccine is out and it is going to be distributed very soon in the U.S. Uh, it will take a lot of time for uh, people to get the, those kind of vaccines. So I think it will take probably three to five or perhaps six months. You know, 
for people to get this vaccine uh, all the population so till then the uncertainty will still loom so uh -huh. for the time being the dollar index is definitely going to uh, the downside is going to be limited and we are going to see upside now what will be the trigger for upside the day us announces another package so mr biden is now going to come in the office and the moment he is going to be there the uh, second stimulus of us is going to be out so yesterday right. there was one of the fed members who has clearly mentioned that uh, uh, the need for second stimulus is very much there the covid 19 cases in us is surging europe are surging so uh, this from here onwards any meaningful correction of gold uh. is a long term opportunity uh, but for the day i think it is going to remain under pressure because the dollar index is i'm expecting it to test 93 93 10 during today's trading session uh. gold and silver both should remain under pressure right So Kunal, with this, if you have to move to crude as well. Now, uh, yesterday we saw API, which reported a major draw in crude oil inventories of almost 5.14 million barrels for the week ended the 6th of November. Now, with that data as well, you've seen oil prices which have ticked up uh, overall. What do you make of this, and where do you see crude moving from here on? Do you think? Uh, that the oil market is now somewhere, you know, on a recovery mode. Uh, so I'll explain with the oil. I was not expecting oil to move about thirty one hundred, but it is already up. Why? And uh, I told that day also, the moment this vaccine news were out, that oil and metals should uh, do well. Metals did not do well, great, but oil shot up quite sharply. The reason for that is that. major hit of demand in crude oil is through aviation sector the jet fuel demand so whenever you pour a, you take a barrel of oil and you put it in a refinery so one of the by product you get is jet fuel oil and uh -huh. now with the vaccine going to be out the airline industry is again going to you know witness a euphoria and people are going to start uh, people will start traveling in next 2 3 months the number of airline will increase so jet fuel consumption is going to increase drastically and hence the demand of crude oil is also going to be much better so sentimentally the demand of oil is going to be better and that's why oil shot up but there are many developments which have taken place in uh, yesterday and today so uh, one of the major development just came 10 minutes back libya's oil production hit 1.1 million barrel mm. so one side uh, opec is uh, on the verge of cutting the production and sticking with the a production cut and one of the members of opec libya is aggressively producing so now other members from the cartel will say that look libya is producing more oil why we why we should not do it mm -hmm. and hence for a day or two oil will remain up but i would still give my cautious view uh, not not very bullish 30 to 50 to maximum 30 to 80 nothing about that so today also i don't want to give any aggressive buy call but maximum 25 30 rupees upside is something you know uh, you can see so 30 to uh, 40 to 50 other levels till then you can go long so if you ask me what is the call sir i would say go long because of the euphoria but this libya's news is not very good news so uh, i used to say to people that 45 dollar is going to be new 100 dollars and i stick with the same view i maintain that view and stance that 45 dollars will definitely remain new 100 dollars so very difficult to take off 45 dollars right now right so that's something we should be watching out for and on base metals as well you know we are seeing a firm trade that's happening firstly if you go to see there is strong demand optimism canal that's coming in from china now if you have to break this up copper prices they have continued to trade higher you have been positive on copper as well and we are seeing supply disruption uh, fear from chile over labor strike now due to this do you see an upside to continue with regards to copper from here on as well so look what happened in china in the month of uh, october the uh, copper uh, production has moved up why it has moved up because the domestic demand in china has been much better Uh, now with the vaccine coming out and uh, when it reaches to south american countries where a lot of mines are closed so at that time 
the production of copper and other metals is going to move up so in spite of such a bullish news of covid vaccine uh, prices of metals are relatively not uh, shot up as compared to the other uh, commodity mm. so fundamentals are very bullish uh, for metals also uh, so i think buying at decline of 532 533 would be good level for going long i am expecting copper to test 545 to 550 in days to come right and what's the view with regards to zinc as well because uh, in terms of prices multi month highs is something that has continued supplies have been tight demand has been high on zinc as well are you expecting this kind of move to continue and do you think there is a possibility we could move uh, say above that 210 rupees level on mcx uh i think uh zinc is also fundamentally looking bullish uh, one of the trigger for zinc right now is uh, winter production cuts so china is going to cut the production of steel from the major steel producing province so because of that the demand of zinc is going to be relatively muted but the supply side continues to remain weaker and when other base metals are in bullish trend even zinc should go up Uh, in the term i would recommend to go long in zinc around 207 208 uh stop loss should be placed around 205 and upside you can see 215 216 that that kind of levels so even at current market price 210 220 i will uh, look to go buy and uh, 215 to 218 should be the target right and anything in terms of nickel as well as lead nickel very bullish i never change my stance in nickel when it comes uh, to nickel fundamentals are great and uh, i would uh, recommend to go long around 11 88 87 one can go long 1205 12 10 other targets which you can see in nickel right thank you kunal so much for joining in and giving us your views as well as strategies i think there are no questions coming in uh, from the viewers as well thank you everyone for joining in and we will be back on friday at 3:30